In this video, we're going to take a look at how thinking particles deals with forces. And these are the standard max forces. We've got a scene already with position born and standard shape and size. This just creates some particles uh, kind of going up in this direction. It's different, uh, different sizes. And you can see we already have a gravity and a wind in the scene. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. In order for TP to be able to use these forces, we need to use these bind space warp function we can select TP and select that space warp. Now if we select TP and look at the modifier panel we see it has a gravity binding on it. We'll go ahead and also bind him to the wind and select him again and we can see both the wind and the gravity are there. Okay, let's go ahead and create another rule and this one we're going to call force and force we're going to go ahead and affect the all group we're going to come over to Operators, Dynamics category, and in order to interact with any of the standard max forces, we're going to use the standard force operator. Drop him out here. Now immediately you see uh, both the wind and the gravity in this deactive list. Uh, this just shows us which forces are bound to TP with this bind space warp. In order to actually use any of them, we're going to have to select them and say Activate. Puts them in the active list. And of course, you know, our rules invalid because the standard force is missing the particle input. We'll connect that. And now what we'll see is instead of flying up, those particles immediately get pulled down by gravity. Unfortunately, it's a little too much gravity. Let's we'll select the gravity and look at him. He's set to strength 0.1. Or I'm sorry, 1.0. Um, we could modify that here, or fortunately, standard force gives us a multiplier input. We can go ahead and use a helper float and connect this here and we'll set it very low. And so this value, this float value, is going to be used by every particle to calculate his gravity. Now that's all fine. Uh, we can see that now they don't get pulled down so strong. Let's say we want to change this up and maybe give every particle a, a random value to use. We'll go ahead and hold Alt and right click that float to get rid of it. We'll click the random helper and drop him out here. And we want to generate a random value per particle, so we'll make that particle input connection. And we only want each particle to calculate a new random value once during the whole animation. So we'll set his new value per to animation. Uh, the value 1 defines the lower range, uh, we'll say 0 0.01. Value 2 is the high range, we'll say 0.1. And we'll just uh, give him a new random seed. And then we'll connect this random value into the multiplier. And so what's happening here is every particle each and every particle is calculating a random value himself and using that value only once during the animation as his uh, gravity force. Now this gravity force is being applied every time step um, if we want to control when that force is being applied we could use the on we could say uh, only do it, do it during the particle age maybe f relative from the time the particle is born until he's 20% uh, old or 20% of his lifespan. Uh, that won't make a whole lot of sense in this particular case, but we can uh, we can see what that does. We'll go ahead and remove that and hide that on input. But right now what we've got is all particles generating a random value between this range and using that as their uh, force value. Now this looks a little funny because some of these smaller particles are falling faster than larger particles. Um, so let's take a look at how we could fix that. This is really one of the greatest things about uh, thinking particles, one of the many great things, is that we have easy access to all of these particle parameters. Um, we can go ahead and expose the size, and we'll go ahead and remove this random by holding Alt and right click. And what we're going to do is take the size and feed that into the multiplier. So each particle, each and every particle, takes his own size and uses that as his multiplier for this force. Now you can see that, again, they're falling way too fast. Their size is probably over 1. Let's take a look at the size. Yeah, so their size is anywhere from 4.28 with 96% variation. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and take their size, but then we're going to modify it along the way and use that into the multiplier. We'll do that with a helper, a float. Drop them there. Take size into the float. Now float is going to modify this value somehow coming in. Right now he's set to add 0. To this value coming in and output it. Well, that's that's really not not what we want to do at this point. We want to actually multiply that value by 
a small value to kind of decrease the value coming in. So we'll go ahead and connect that to the multiplier so that each and every all particle takes its size. That size gets multiplied by 0 0.02 and is used per particle as his gravity force. So now we see something much much nicer. What we see is large particles who have larger size uh, being more affected by gravity and smaller particles getting less affected. Let's go ahead and take a look. Um, we've got a wind out here. Let's go ahead and bind space warp. Let's take the wind, drag them onto TP. And now here in the standard force we see, oh he, he must have been bound twice. Let's actually take a look. Yeah, we have two wind bindings. Let's remove one of them. So standard force now also has this wind in his deactive list. If we activate him here and put him in the active list, then the wind is also going to use the size multiplied by the float as his multiplier. So large particles are going to get more affected by both gravity and wind because they're both using the same multiplier. If you want independent force control, what we have to do is we're going to go ahead and select wind, deactivate him. We're going to hold shift and drag the standard force to duplicate him. And now, because this is an exact copy of this one, this guy, the gravity, is still in the active list. So let's deactivate him, activate the wind instead. So now this will be the wind control, and this will control the gravity. Let's go ahead and make that connection. Let's go ahead and add a float because that wind's going to be really strong. And we'll just make it a very small wind effect. So we see, again, gravity using the size and affecting those particles. And the wind is just going to use a generic value of 0 0.01. Let's go ahead and make wind dynamic. Let's say, let's uh, expose the particle age and we'll remove that float for now. We'll take the particle age and connect that to the multiplier. Now this actually gets pretty extreme because the age coming out is 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 15 right now, so a multiplier of 15 is going to be pretty extreme. Let's hold shift and click that multiplier to disconnect it. We'll grab another float, take that age into the float, and multiply that by a small value, and put that into the multiplier. And so what happens is that wind value is going to increase as those particles get older. You can see that the wind is affecting both the large and the small the same uh, because the, it's not dependent on the size, it's dependent on the age. Uh, let's actually go a little bit less there. And you can see there quite a bit better. They don't really get affected until, you know, up around the age 100. And then they really start going away. Okay, so that's kind of a, a quick and in easy uh, intro tour to how TP deals with forces. Uh, this will work with all of the standard max forces, um, as well as many of the blur ones. Um, just remember, you're going to use the operator's dynamics standard force. And just remember to use the bind space warp to bind that space warp onto the TP icon. And then it will appear in the, in the deactive list, so activate it. Okay, let's go ahead and move on.